I thought I'd do a video describing map prediction and fuel film modeling as on the Nexus and Elite um, HALTEC ECUs. Um, and I'm going to start off by explaining why we actually need transient fuel in corrections in the first place. There are three reasons for it. So the first reason is not that map sensors are slow, that by the time you do enough filtering on them, they end up being slow. So at idle, the map signal jumps up and down like that. As each cylinder does its intake stroke, it depletes air from the plenum and then the plenum charges up afterwards. So that might vary from, say, 30 kPa to 36 kPa. And if the ECU was just sampling um, each of those points and delivering the fuel based on that um, unfiltered value, then you'd have your fuel mix to jump in by like 20% at idle, which is not going to be good. So uh, when you snap open the throttle, that jumps up very quickly to say um, around 100 kPa. Um, and the way that people in the past have dealt with this bumpiness is by applying a, a really slow time-based filter to it. Now that means that when you have the filter on that step, it goes like that. Um, and in the past, people have dealt with this by saying, well, we need to generate the right amount of fuel for this amount of air. We need to enrich it. But the reason why we need to enrich it is because uh, it's not because you actually need enrichment. It's actually just the map sensor is reading the wrong value. It should be reading this. It's actually reading this. Um, so this is a, it's a bit better than this on the Nexus ECUs because um, the next CSU actually averages the map signal between each TDC event, um, which has the effect of smoothing that out, which is good. Um, but you still, whenever you open the throttle, um, there's going to be a delay until the next event happens. The next TDC happens and it can sample, um, get that average value there. So um, that's the first reason. So it's not that map sensors are slow, it's just that by the time you filter them so it's usable, they end up being slow. Um, there's a second reason, which is fuel pooling. So, sorry about my drawing, but basically, if you've got an injector here, and that's squirting fuel, there's the intake runner, and that goes into the engine this way. Um, Whatever you squirt here, not all of it goes directly into the engine. So some percentage of it will end up on the runner wall, for forming a puddle there. Now, in the steady state, the rate of, of adding to this puddle is the same as the rate of the puddle evaporating. So the volume of fuel in the puddle stays the same. And the amount that you inject here ends up in the cylinder. But when you have, um, so if you imagine, say we're trying to deliver, say, 8 microliters of fuel at idle. So the injector's delivering 8 microliters. But out of that, maybe, actually I'll make it 10 microliters to make the maths easy. Out of that, maybe 20% of it, say 2 microliters, is going into the fuel puddle. and 8 microliters going into the engine, but at the same time, 2 microliters is evaporating from the puddle there. So you end up with the full 10 microliters in there, but that's only because it's in the steady state. Um, if you suddenly snap open from the throttle and you now need, say, 30 microliters because you've gone from 33 kPa to 100 kPa, then I'll draw it over here, I guess. If you just deliver 30 microliters here, then you're still going to have 20% of that going into the puddle. So 20% the 20 of 30 microliters is 6 microliters. And then you've got 24 microliters, which will go directly into the engine. Now, because this puddle is still the same mass as it was here, the same amount's evaporating. So you only get two microliters going off there, 
um, which means that the total you end up at the engine is 26 microliters, which means that you don't get as much fuel as you need to. So um, this, I assume this isn't a problem on direct injected engines. I've never played with direct, in, direct injected engines, so I don't know. Um, but this is another problem. Um, now, the third problem is that when you snap open the throttle, um, the air actually goes through the throttle and charges up the pattern very, very quickly. And the problem is that if you imagine this is the point where we open the, the throttle here, um, if we're doing, say, closed valve injection and we've injected the fuel here, then we open the throttle, then this huge gulp of air is going to go down into the cylinder. We've already injected the fuel based on the fact that the manifold pressure was quite low because the engine was at, at idle, at closed throttle before. So the only way that you can um, get the correct mixture then is to inject another dose of fuel afterwards. Well, there are two ways to do it. I'm just going to call this gulp of air because I can't work out how to draw it. So one solution for that would be to have a, I don't know what you call it, a chaser pulse, um, which would be an asynchronous injection event. And then the other way would be just to um, inject late. So if you do open valve injection, um, so it finishes just before the intake valve needs to close, um, then that gives the ECU the most um, up-to-date information to deliver the correct um, pulse width. One of the downsides with this asynchronous injection is that if you fire that on all cylinders at once, then all the other cylinders except for the one that happens to have the intake valve open, um, when you snap open the throttle, all get overfueled. Um, and so I can imagine that there might be a way of the ECU being clever enough to know um, which cylinders, if any, need that extra pulse and which ones don't, um, and then only delivering to those. Um, that I've never actually done the maths or the coding to, um, to make that work. Um, so in practice, I've found that just injecting really late actually solves the problem. So um, the way that, so they're the actual problems that we need to solve with transit throttle. So the way we solve the first one here um, is with a thing called map prediction. And basically this means that you have a table of um, throttle position and engine speed. And then within that table, um, or the other way around actually, doesn't really matter, um, but within that table you have the um, predicted, um, you have the map value that you'd expect to have at that RPM and TPS combination. And when the ECU sees the TPS change really quickly, it can look up that value in the table instead of relying on the value from the map sensor. Um, it actually uses the higher of either the value in the table or the map sensor, which means if you're already on boost and you snap open the throttle further, um, then you don't get a lower value, you, you actually get the um, the value straight from the map sensor. Um, and it also scales in between the two, so you don't get a big um, transition when you go over the threshold. Um, so that's how we deal with that one. The way we deal with this one is we have um, a fuel pooling table um, and a time constant table. So that says what percentage of fuel um, goes into the puddle. And the time constant is the rate of the time constant for the evaporation from the puddle. Um, this is all described in the How Technology Base article, by the way, um, with further links to further research on it. Um, all right, so basically the way you set this up, it's all described in the um, uh, in the knowledge base article, but all you really have to do is turn it on. The defaults are pretty good. Um, the ECU can, um, can tune this itself um, if you enable it. This does need a bit of manual tuning sometimes, but um, usually not a lot. Um, and it works really well. So thank you, everyone. Have fun.